Hello all, welcome to Netbook and welcome back to Microsoft Tutorial. In my previous video, I talked about how we can design a RAML in any point design center using the text editor. Today I'm planning to talk about how we can define a URI parameter and query parameters in the RAML. I'm going to take the same example of the previous one, the contacts API. I'm going to define this URI parameters and query parameters. As part of today's uh, video, I'm going to explain about how we can define the URI parameter, how we can define the query parameter, what is the difference between this URI parameter and the query parameter. I'm going to show how we can implement that uh, in our example. The URI parameter is, first of all, something it is identifying the resource unique feeling. That means I want to fetch a particular customer details. So I can identify with a ID, customer ID. I want to retrieve based on the account number. Account number is unique for your account. So for every account, they will have their own account number. You are going to fetch it using that account number, right? So with the one identical data element, if you are going to fetch any data, that is where you are going to call as a URI parameter. Now in this case, I'm going to retrieve a contact details using the contact ID. Then that is over here, we call that as a URI parameter. It is looks like this one in the URL. When I say query parameter, if we want to filter out the data based on some condition, then we use a query parameter. Imagine I need to filter the cards which are color will be blue. Then that means there will be so many cards. After that, you want it all the cards which are color is blue. It might retrieve really multiple with that condition. Now in this example, I'm going to use contacts I want to filter out whose name starting are is equal to the first name is equal to Aki. Then I'm going to see those all contact. Not only for that, if you want to sort or filter any or pagination purpose also, we use a query parameter. And the query parameter will be in a URL will be like start with after question mark. And it will have a key that is a query key and query value. That is how it will be defined. Now, some of the examples, if you want to declare the URI parameter, you can declare like this for books to retrieve particular book slash books slash book ID. Cards, if you want to get it, the model number based on the model number you are going to fetch it. And query parameters, you want to get accounts whose status is active, then you can fetch it this way. If you want books which is published in a year of 2021, and uh, we are going to limit only 20 records and we are going to start based on the ascending order and cars i want to filter whose maker is here that is how we can you know pass it a query around let's start i'm going to explain about the current contacts api how we can define the uri parameter how i can define the query parameter i'm going to see in my previous example i explained about this contacts api open that contacts api over here if you see this is contacts and post method for creating a contact. So after that, you can see ID, which is URI parameters. We already use this URI parameter concept in our, our example. Now I'm going to explain that, how exactly we can do that. Even though if you define this like this, it is a URI parameter. And if you want to specify it separately, you can put it enter after this. And over here, you can see URI parameters under id click on that uri parameter we have already defined that id and you can specify that id over here the type will be like i can say over here any that means it will allow any data type array so list of data if you want to access it boolean date time date uh, date time and date only date time only file integer nil number object string time only this many data types it supports for me i want to define this id as a string i can select 
a string over here that is how we can define a uri parameter over here you can specify over here the maximum length minimum length of also and if you want to specify the some pattern you should be having this id and that you can put also and if you want to define it is a required you can say required it is a true and if you want to specify the description about that you can put it that description also and if you want to put a display name also you can put it uh, this is the contact id and if you want to describe you can click on description and you can pass this uri parameter is used for identify the resource so this is how we can define the uri parameter inside the raml now i'm going to talk about how we can define a query parameter so currently if you see i'm fetching the based on the id the contacts i want to fetch all the contacts first of all to fetch all the contacts you don't need to pass the id as a uri parameter so under contacts you can define that as get method over here so because of you don't you are not passing any uri parameters over here this is slash contact get method i'm going to define display name over here like uh, get all contacts i can put some description also if i want then i'm going to have a responses because of it is a get method it is going to have a responses when it is going to retrieve successful response it is going to be the 200 and then it is going to have a body and it is going to have a json data it is going to return the type i can i can specify over here and the type will be i want to include the the contact details data types get contact response but this is going to return only one contact details response i want to define as a array if you want to define as a array you can specify within a braces like this also the array now this is just for retrieving all the data but what i want to do is i want to retrieve the data based on certain conditions like filtering some data how i can do i can define a query parameters over here after display name click on enter over here you can see query parameters click on query parameters and i can specify the query parameters i want to filter the data based on the first name first name so one of the query parameter is first name i'm going to define as string over here and it is not always required i can say otherwise like this this is the first name type will be string i can define this also like this now this is not always mandatory i can say required false sometimes i want to see all the customers so i'm not going to pass any query parameters sometimes i want to filter the data based on this first name that time i will pass it this that's why i define this i want to limit only 20 records for each query in the data so it might have 1000 uh, contacts but i want it only 20 contacts at one go so i can limit contacts 20 so i can say type will be here integer i can say you can see integer data type and it is again i can say required false so if i say true over here so always expect some data over here so let me test it now this is how we can define the query parameters as many as query parameters in our resources under within the method now let me test it how it looks like let me first test the uri parameter i'm going to select this is my uri parameter get method and if i go over here try it out i'm going to select mock surface under the contact id is my uri parameter over here right so you need to pass that uri parameter details over here this is a mandatory because of here you can see that also star i can pass it 111 the red mark also is gone now i can test it this you can see this is how it is going to work that means in the uri parameter in the url over here at end you can see that id is going over here 
Now I want to test query parameters. Go to the contacts, get all contacts, try it out. Here I'm going to select mock service. And over here, if you see, the limit is star mark is showing over here, but the first name is not showing anything. So if I sent it, the request now, the zero is limit automatically is taking. If you are not passing anything, it will give an error. Limit is invalid. It is required because of it is true defined as well as it is an integer. 20, I'm going to pass it and then click on send. It will return the data. Now, the thing is over here, I'm not passing any first name over here. If I want to pass something, I can pass it. Otherwise, I don't need to pass it. When I pass it here, if I go to my URL, you can see the first name is going a key, limit is 20 it is going. And if you have more than one query parameter, here is one query parameter, this one. This is another query parameter. So in between, it will come and if you have multiple query parameters. If I'm not passing this first name over here, the URL will become now, you can see, only will have one query parameter. The query parameter will come after the question mark. The limit is your query key and 20 is your query value. That is how we can define and use query parameters within the RAML. I hope this is clear and you can define over here the, you know, the conditions also, whatever you want to put, minimum length and maximum length, how it should have and all. Those also, you can define that also. So even if you want to limit some default value, default I will say, 20 over here. So whenever you are going to test it, this here it is automatically filling that 20 over here. You can see, even though if you are not passing, automatically it will take as a 20 as a this query parameter. That's it. We have learned about how we can define URI parameter, how we can define a query parameter within the RAML. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, to network.